As the COVID-19 pandemic spreads across the globe, the world looks to science and medicine for solutions. I think you're going to see a licensed vaccine in about a year or so. We are confident in the safety data that we've seen thus far. From drug companies and clinical researchers racing to develop tests and vaccines, to hospitals and public health experts on the front lines of a fierce battle. Testing is going to be critical to ending this lockdown. It's okay to not be okay right now. Coming up, a coronavirus special report, medicine's critical challenge. Hello and welcome, I'm Taylor Riggs. For months now, both the financial and the human costs of the coronavirus pandemic have been mounting. Every portion of the global economy has been shut down, but medicine is trying to come back and push back against the pandemic. Aggressive public health measures have been put in place and the pharmaceutical industry has launched an all out drive to develop a cure. Here's a look at what's been done so far. Let's start with antivirals. They're the drugs that fight viruses inside your body. They stop the virus from replicating or infecting cells. There was a recent promising report from a trial of Gilead's remdesivir. The company says it helped coronavirus patients recover faster from standard care. Meanwhile, President Trump has touted two antivirals that have been used to treat malaria, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. They're generics made by Teva Pharmaceuticals, Sanofi and Novartis, among others. There's limited evidence that they work against the coronavirus. Two trials could have results this month. Next, vaccines. They're considered crucial to the pandemic because they create widespread immunity. They also take longer to develop. That's because they must be proven to be extremely safe since they're given to people who aren't sick. The WHO says there are 70 vaccines in some stage of development. Companies developing them include Johnson & Johnson, Sanofi, in conjunction with GlaxoSmithKline, and Denovio. U.S. health officials are studying a vaccine made by Moderna. It's being tested on 45 patients, and there may be early results late this month or in early June. Finally, the indirect therapies. They don't directly treat the virus, but they help patients by mitigating some of the effects, such as difficulty with breathing or severe inflammation. Regeneron and Roche are among the companies making these drugs. Experts agree that a vaccine is crucial to ending the pandemic, and executives from a lot of these companies who have vaccines in development spoke to Bloomberg, starting with the CEO of Johnson & Johnson. We're working with a platform, uh, so think of it as a vaccine, part of a vaccine, uh, where we've got uh, significant experience in areas like SARS, things like Ebola, things like HIV. Uh, and so we are confident in the safety uh, data that we've seen thus far. And it's, the, it's already the vector's been used uh, in elderly. It's been used in uh, younger children. Uh, and uh, so that gives us confidence from a safety perspective. The early testing that we've done so far that includes a range of animal as well as in vivo testing also indicates that we should have an active uh, vaccine as well. But of course, we need to complete the trials that we'll be doing in humans in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, before we develop uh, the final data set, uh, you know, that would help us make that decision at the appropriate moment. So to push ahead and push perhaps farther than we should, if you were successful in success in the fourth quarter, when would we have a vaccine available to people? So, David, look, what we would intend to do, again, work closely with regulators so that by late December or early January, we would expect to have uh, some type of interim analysis in our first in human trials. And then at that point, we would have to take a look at that data set in its totality. Uh, I think clearly we would be also looking at what is that, how is the virus proceeding and, and what kind of state is it in around the world. 
uh, and then make a decision. So I think at some point uh, in the second quarter, we could be in a position again on an emergency basis, depending on where the pandemic is going, where there could be some access to this. And then we would expect that to ramp up significantly over the rest of the year. Give us a sense, because I know you're committing a lot of funds to production, not just the development of vaccine, but in success to produce a lot of it. Uh, how big could you get? How soon, if in fact it does work? We're very fortunate in that we have a, uh, a very unique production capability uh, where it gives us the ability and, and relatively small containers to make very large volumes in the hundreds of millions of doses of this vaccine. Now, again, let me be clear, we still have more work to do to determine the exact yield of these particular uh, you know, technologies uh, and, and to compare that versus the safety and efficacy data. But based upon the original work that we've done, again, we feel quite confident that we can be in the range of hundreds of millions of vaccines as we would move into the early part of 2001 with the goal to have a billion in place by the end of the year. We've uh, announced uh, today what we think is a, an unprecedented partnership of two of the world's biggest um, uh, companies um, in, in vaccines, leaders in vaccines, um, with, with, with proven technologies in pandemic um, uh, uh, vaccination, whether that be uh, Sanofi's uh, antigen or the uh, adjuvant um, that we uh, used successfully in the last um, pandemic. The key of an adjuvant is that it can be antigen sparing, so you can get to producing more volumes and therefore protecting more people uh, uh, sooner. Uh, and if we're successful, there's an enormous amount of work to do, and we're still at early stages, but if we're successful and are able to accelerate the timelines, as um, as we hope to do, we should be able to get to hundreds of, mil of millions of doses by the end of next year. Now, that still means the world is going to need more than one successful vaccine, which is also why this is one of seven uh, partnerships that we've announced around the world and wish every to su uh, success to the uh, other candidates um, uh, that are developing here. So lots to do, um, but clearly uh, getting a vaccine uh, that is safe and works and at scale is, is our number one priority in terms of what we can contribute uh, as solutions. Presumably this will need to be manufactured around the world. Uh, and where does the current um, kind of uh, manufacturing facility, where do the current manufacturers ex manufacturing facilities exist that will allow you to scale it quick enough? Well, we're obviously contributing the adjuvant here, and you're completely right. Uh, to get to a, 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 an urgent solution here, we need not only partnerships, we also need a global approach. So in terms of the adjuvant side of things, uh, we're expecting, would expect to be manufacturing in the US, Europe, potentially even the UK. But that's something that's under ongoing review at the moment, because obviously we have to pre prepare a degree of capacity um, uh, at risk, and our goal um, uh, I'm sure with the multiple vaccines that will come forward from us and for others to make sure that we can support access uh, globally, uh, initially to those that uh, most urgently need it, the most vulnerable or indeed the most exposed, but also make sure that we have access uh, not just to developed economies, but some of, from, for some of those developing economies that are going to be very hard hit by this uh, and often with uh, you know, more vulnerable healthcare systems. So how far are we realistically from a vaccine? We're hearing early next year. Is that the soonest? So I think uh, that question is when we'll get to a licensed uh, vaccine that will be delivered for everyone. I think that what you're going to see after the phase ones is groups move into the phase two part and move towards efficacy trials. And I believe you're going to see that data sooner, of course, than you'll get to a licensed vaccine. But if we use an advantage, uh, uh, an, uh, if we use an example of another vaccine that was developed during an outbreak, the Ebola vaccine that was developed in West Africa, once that got through its small efficacy trial and showed it had some ability, um, efficacy against infection, it was then deployed rapidly as part of its development towards licensure in important and at-risk populations. And, and we kind of had an idea then it was somewhat effective, and we now were actually using it as a tool while it was moving towards that licensure. So I think that that's really the situation you're going to see here. I mean, there are other situations people are saying, like emergency use, 
Well, those are important as well, but I think you will see at least the one I just said. So realistically, what's the soonest in the most optimistic scenario? Give me a time frame that we could see a, a licensed vaccine. So I think you're going to see a licensed vaccine still, like everyone says, in about a year or so. But I think you're going to see these products come along and start to give us um, indications of their efficacy um, significantly before that. And those will then be tools that we can use to start um, protecting our healthcare workers, frontline responders, um, people that work in uh, environments that make it them at higher risk as we develop them. So I think there's an important stage there of how we roll them out towards licensure. That how much great. sooner is that? Well, that could be um, towards the end of this year. There's plenty of optimism that a vaccine will eventually be produced, but opinions differ on the exact timeline. Roche CEO Severin Schwan told Bloomberg that he doubts a cure is just around the corner. Well, typically the development of a vaccine takes several years. Uh, now, companies who are uh, involved in, in, in uh, the development of, of, uh, medicine, uh, of vaccines, which we are not as a company, uh, they would tell you that it takes at least 12 to 18 months to bring out uh, a vaccine. I personally think this is very ambitious. You do not only have to develop the vaccine, you have to test it sufficiently with patients, and then importantly, it has to be ramped up. Um, again, if you compare to how long it took in the past, 12 to 18 months, uh, seems a very ambitious timeline to me. Coming up, more from Roche CEO Severin Schwan, whose company is focusing on coronavirus testing. Plus, the CEO of Novartis says existing drugs could be effective in fighting COVID-19, but it will take time to find out. This is Bloomberg. Welcome back, I'm Taylor Riggs, and this is the Coronavirus Special Report, Medicine's Critical Challenge. As COVID-19 spread from country to country in February and March, many governments imposed national lockdowns, bringing economic activity to a virtual standstill. When cases begin to decline, a key factor in a nation's ability to reopen is the capacity for widespread testing. Leaders of several companies developing tests and diagnostic products spoke to Bloomberg about meeting that challenge. Antibody tests are very important in the fight of this coronavirus pandemic uh, for two reasons. First, they help us uh, to better understand how infections develop in a certain uh, population. And secondly, uh, there is good reason to believe um, that uh, antibody tests show you whether you have developed immunity after you have been um, infected. As far as Roche is concerned, uh, we will launch a highly reliable test um, at the beginning of May. Um, and the good news is, uh, due to this technology, we will be able to ramp up testing very quickly to the high double millions of tests already by June. How should governments around the world plan to use these antibody tests to lift lockdown measures? And how soon could lockdown measures be lifted if we have full-scale antibody testing? We are already talking with governments exactly about that uh, question. And uh, the, the general understanding is that you would first focus antibody testing uh, on really uh, critical professions, for example, uh, healthcare workers who are at the front line, who are most exposed. And from there, you start to expand to broader populations. Our team and uh, the Glaxo team, together with the University of Cambridge, have done an absolutely incredible job. We now have 150 people working on site in Cambridge in the McLaren building. Um, we've been able over the last uh, couple of weeks to you know, bring all uh, very modern equipment. We were lucky because we had lots of PCR equipment that was waiting to go into our new 
are in these sites at the Cambridge Biosensor, Biosensors campus, and we redirected this equipment to this uh, testing site. Um, we are going to start testing mm -hmm. this week. Uh, we are very much on track, and uh, we believe we will be delivering the 30,000 tests a day very, very quickly. We are actually sourcing, maybe Do if we I can add, sourcing the kit. What are the unexpected challenges in this? Yeah, no, actually, we do trust the test. Um, we, I was going to say we are sourcing the kit from uh, a, a British uh, company, a UK-based company, um, and uh, called Prima, Prima Design. And so we have, you know, we are very much working with them. The test is validated, of course. We've just gone through accreditation by the NHS uh, as a new lab. You have to be accredited. And so everything is very much on track, and uh, mm -hmm. this viral testing will actually work work uh, very well, we believe. We have equipment that is very modern with a very high <coughs> throughput, so um, we think we can really uh, deliver those tests very efficiently with this new equipment and the people we have on site. Another area of research for drug companies has been repurposing existing drugs. There had been some hope that a previous drug, hydroxychloroquine, it's an established treatment for several diseases, might be effective against COVID-19. The CEO of Novartis addressed this topic with Bloomberg. He sounded a note of caution. Now, in the near term, what we're going to be able to find out is on so-called drug repurposing, including hydroxychloroquine, uh, as well as other drugs in our portfolio, as, other, as well as other companies' portfolios. The important thing I think everyone needs to understand is we need randomized, controlled data, which is adequately powered to really identify if these drugs are having the effect. That takes time. Those studies take time. I expect us to have a significant number of well-designed clinical trial uh, readouts in the June-July timeframe. Now, specifically hydroxychloroquine, uh, again, there hasn't been, I think, a properly powered randomized controlled study uh, read out yet to really determine if the medicine is having its expected benefit. We ourselves are running a study, a uh, powered uh, large-scale study supported by the U.S. FDA in the U.S., uh, and then we're supporting about 13 investigator-initiated trials, which are much larger, to look at the medicine in a variety of different settings. We're also doing studies on Ilaris and Jactavi, two other uh, of our medicines, as well as uh, a range of other drugs through investigators. But the, the thing I really want listeners to understand is we have to wait for the properly controlled, randomized, large-scale studies to read out before we really know if these drugs are having a positive effect or not. OK, so we need to wait for the results on those. In terms of the vaccine, and I, and I know that nobody had a crystal ball on this, Vaz, but in terms of the vaccine, uh, we've spoken to some health bosses who say, look, expectations of a vaccine this year are just, that's just too, too much to expect. Do you think it could come this year? I, you know, I, I, think, I think it would be uh, an astonishing feat if we were able to get a vaccine already out by, by this year, given that in my own experience uh, spending decades of working on vaccine, uh, R&D and, and, uh, and distribution, it does take many years to get a safe, highly effective vaccine. I think what gives me hope right now is groups that are working on vaccines are leveraging safe technologies. Of course, in the UK, the Oxford Group, but there are others that are trying to leverage safe technologies to accelerate the ability to use some of these vaccines. Uh, could we have vaccine use in the controlled setting? In clinical trials, certainly. I think broad-scale use, we have to wait for the data to really determine if we have a safe, efficacious vaccine. And that typically, even in an accelerated timeline, would take 18 to 24 months. Still ahead, a view from the front line of response to the coronavirus. Expert insight from Johns Hopkins next. This is Bloomberg. Welcome back to this coronavirus special report, Medicine's Critical Challenge. I'm Taylor Riggs. Bloomberg has developed a unique partnership with a leading authority on COVID-19. Johns Hopkins has been leading the international response to this pandemic. And every day we get insights from experts on public health, infectious disease, and emergency preparedness. Here are the highlights from some of those conversations. 
emerging markets have been hit very hard by the initial phase of the crisis. We've seen massive outflow of capital from most emerging markets repatriating in the United States. The COVID epidemic is just picking up in emerging markets. As we know, it lasts for about four months, and the peak is for two months. And emerging markets are much less capable of absorbing the health dimension of the crisis. They will be put under extreme strain, and we expect to see unprecedented decline in economic activity and possibly widespread financial damages. Testing is going to be critical to ending this lockdown, and then you link that testing with quick access to care, contact tracing, which is identifying people who had contact with people who are sick, um, and making sure that they stay isolated or quarantined um, if they're not sick until they pass their, their possible window of getting others sick. Those are the key measures for sure. What part of the testing steps, plural, is the one that's the constraint? What's the the thing that makes it so it's so darn hard to get tests done in this pandemic? I think basically what happened is we had a not so great strategy and then we executed that strategy in not in a not so great way, in a poor way. And and so we were starting from behind from the get go. And so now we don't have sort of this systematic approach to testing. It's a it's a patchwork across across the United States and people are making their own decisions. They're they're working with what they have um, to get people tested, but it's not systematic and no one has visibility on the whole system. <laughs> Where do you see the greatest progress being made right now in terms of therapies and vaccines to help us deal with this? The real progress right now um, that people are more excited about has to do with the um, immune therapies, that whether you can use, for example, the antibodies that people who have recovered from the coronavirus have made, take them out of their blood and give them to other people very early or even before they're exposed. And, there are studies like that at Johns Hopkins and at other institutions in the United States. There's some promising data that has come out of China, but a lot more evidence is needed there, too. So I'm hopeful, because so many people have recovered from the coronavirus, that they can be donors and other people can benefit. We have many who are really maintaining an optimistic stance and communities working together or providing whatever they can uh, to fight this virus. We're also seeing increasing conflict and voices of those wanting to move on to open back up to businesses. And bolstering each other <clears throat> will require actively caring for ourselves and each other, um, continuing to advocate for increasing supplies, right. increasing testing, supporting our leaders developing vaccines. But it's okay to know it's not, it's okay to not be okay right now. Um, continue to reach out to others from a safe distance, take advantage right. of our electronic <clears throat> devices to connect um, and, and really uh, watch out for our friends, our families, look to spiritual advisors, therapists, and it's okay to breathe, it's okay to cry and, um, and to keep moving forward. That wraps up our special report, Coronavirus Medicine's Critical Challenge. Make sure to tune in to Bloomberg TV and radio to stay up to date and visit Bloomberg.com for 24 hour a day news and analysis. We do wish you good health. I'm Taylor Riggs. This is Bloomberg.